Thank you, uh, Senator Carper. And you and I have worked on the Senator from Missouri worked on uh, issues to uh, try to protect data breach, to try to have one standard for notifying people whose uh, information has been uh, accessed by people who shouldn't have it. And we're going to continue to work on that and uh, look for opportunities, whether it's this bill or some other bill, to add that important element uh, to what we're doing here. Uh, but, uh, Mr. President, I, I come to the floor today, as I'm sure many others are, to, so, to express support uh, for this bill, for the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act, a bill that gives us tools that we don't currently have and, in fact, allows us to get beyond some of the barriers that we do currently have, a bill that would allow individuals who see uh, the information that they're, they're uh, responsible for being attacked uh, to call others in their same business and say, here's what's happening to us right now. If you're not seeing it already, you should be looking for it. And when they do that, it doesn't violate any competitive uh, sharing of information. What it does is bring everybody into the loop of defense as quickly as possible and also allow them uh, to look for help from the government as well. Uh, so I express support for this, and, and we know that day after day, Americans who uh, turn on the news, listen to the news, read the news, uh, hear news of another cyber attack. Some involve attack of government systems themselves while others involve the private sector. In 2012 and 2013, uh, hacker groups uh, linked to Iran targeted American bank websites uh, and continued to sustain that attack on those websites in a way that was designed to disrupt business of people trying to do business, trying to pay their own personal bills, trying to do things that people should expect to be able to easily do. Early in 2014, uh, we learned that cyber criminals had stolen 40 million credit card numbers from a major retailer uh, and had probably compromise an additional 70 million accounts, over 100 million accounts in one uh, collection of news sources about the same event. We also have learned that a lot of times you hear about these and uh, they seem bad enough at first, but they seem a whole lot worse later when you find out what really happened, when we really see how deep these criminals were able to go, how deep these terrorists were able to go, how deep these government-sponsored entities were able to go to get at information that they shouldn't have. In September of that same year, September 2014, uh, we learned that another major re retailer had suffered a data breach. In that case, there were 56 million credit card holders. Uh, February of this year, we learned that a health care provider, an insurance provider rather, health insurance provider, had had um, hacking into their system, and 80 million customers were affected. This was a data breach that particularly impacted my state, particularly impacted Missourians, uh, and we saw an, a, a huge change in the IRS fraud that occurred this year because, uh, we believe at least, because people suddenly had all this information that they got from the other account suddenly somebody beside you was filing your tax return. And by the way, your refund was better than it had ever been. And as soon as that card was received, it was taken care of. Uh, only, only later did the people who really had the um, income tax return to file find out that somebody had filed it for them. In June of this year, uh, maybe the most surprising to all of us who have heard over and over again that, well, the private sector struggling, but dot, dot mill is very good and dot gov is better than anything but dot mill. But suddenly we find out the U.S. Office of Personnel Management uh, increased in June a previous estimate uh, of how many uh, files of federal employees and people that were related to those files, 21 and a half million people. And then we found out that also included five and a half million sets of fingerprints. I'm not exactly sure what you could do with somebody's fingerprints on the internet today, 
but I can only imagine what you might be able to figure out to do with those fingerprints. Remember, your fingerprints don't change, and the comp the, the, probably the government entity responsible for that hacking that has those fingerprints is always gonna have those fingerprints as they think of new and malicious ways to use them. So we're talking about well over 100 million Americans who have already had their personal information in hands of people it shouldn't be in the hands of. The challenge before us uh, is as clear as it is urgent. Virtually every aspect of our society and our economy rely on information technology. It's enabled tremendous economic growth. It's enabled tremendous efficiencies in every sector, but it's put all kinds of information out there uh, in ways that looking back, we're gonna wonder why we made that information so available in so many places and so unprotected. Federal, state, and local governments rely on uh, that information technology as well. Uh, and as the technology advances, its uh, widespread uh, adoption has also opened us to new dangers. Modern cybersecurity threats are sophisticated, they're massive, and they are persistent. This doesn't just happen uh, every day, it happens all the time, every day. The culprits of these attacks and intrusions range in terms of their motives and in range of their abilities. Uh, we just heard of a teenager who figured out how to get into the personal account of the CIA director, at least that's the public media report, and the, the Homeland Security director. Uh, this, this is not a particularly sophisticated, but obviously a pretty capable person who gets to two individuals you'd think would be the most cautious about what they share and how they share it. Uh, some of these people are bent on just sheer vandalism, just the thrill of cyber vandalism, while others are determined to steal intellectual property from American companies, a motive there that is clear that it's easier to steal it if you're them, I guess, than it is to do, go to the hard work of creating it. And suddenly that information is out there and the people who created it have been robbed. Um, I hear this all the time. Uh, when I visit companies in my state. We've seen cyber intrusions used for espionage. We've seen one major company attack for no other reason than to embarrass the company because a foreign government didn't like something the company had done. Uh, it's a, quite a way to have a movie review that we're just gonna destroy as much of your technology as we can by a cyber invasion. Uh, a great many more of these people are motivated by greed, pilfering other people's identities, getting access to other people's account information, uh, and uh, selling that information on the black market becomes a real opportunity for them. The more you m remove it from the person who eventually got, initially got it, the harder it is to find out who initially got that and what they did with it. Underneath of all this, uh, is the, the implication of more serious attacks that can cause physical harm, that can cause mass disruption, the critical infrastructure of the country, very dependent on cyber security. Uh, this really begs the question, what are we doing to protect our country and our citizens from uh, these cyber adversaries? I, I've been in the Senate for five years. I've had the great opportunity to represent uh, the people of Missouri here for five years, and during every one of those five years, we've been talking about it's really important that we do something about cyber security. Uh, well, this is the only approach I've seen in those five years that has bipartisan support, it has a bicameral consensus. This is something that can happen. This is a problem, it's time to stop talking about it. I mean, do we want some other government to have everybody's fingerprints before we start, before we do something about it. This is now the time to do something about it. As a member of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, I'm, I'm certainly here to support the chairman of that committee and the vice chairman of that committee uh, to finally pass this bill, <clears throat> a bill to uh, enhance the public-private partnerships that can provide the kind of cyber defense we need. Now, we need to to do that, we need to encourage lots of sharing. 
Uh, we need to encourage sharing of attacks. We need to encourage, as I said early on, the ability to call somebody else in your same business and said, uh, to contact them and say, this is happening right now. That's the best time to say it. The other option is this happened to us late last night or happened yesterday. But to let others know that this is happening to us, is it happening to you? Uh, there's lots of uh, misunderstanding about this concept. Without getting too technical, uh, cyber threats are the malicious codes and algorithms used to infect computer systems and attack networks. Now, how do we stop that? They are techniques that use uh, bits and bytes. They have ones and zeros. They're way too complicated for people that aren't fighting every day to protect themselves. So what do we do to help to where we're all protected? In very dangerous circumstances, uh, these techniques can be used to remotely control critical infrastructure. Saw something on the news the other day where uh, some hacker for no intent, maybe just to see if they could do it, had figured out how to take over one of the cars that was driving itself. Well, suddenly the car wasn't driving itself, the hacker was driving itself. Uh, but when a particular company finds itself subjected to some novel new approach, the quicker they can, they can share that, the better. When the government discovers a new method being used to infiltrate uh, information technology systems uh, abroad or here, uh, they need to be able to share that with American companies quickly so they can protect themselves. These are things the private sector sees that the government does not, uh, and there are things that the government sees that the private sector does not. Uh, this gives the obligation and opportunity to both of them to join in this important fight. Modern uh, communications networks move at, a ra at an incredibly rapid pace. We need to be fighting back at that, si that same kind of rapid pace. It's a strictly voluntary program. Unlike some of the other programs we've talked about to secure ourselves in a post 9-11 world, this is a strictly voluntary program that leverages American ingenuity to unleash the arsenal for democracy, this time to unleash the arsenal for democracy against cyber adversaries. Uh, when it comes to the cyber threat, we have to act for common purpose. Uh, throughout this debate, there's been a great deal of discussion about the need to protect liberty in the information age. Uh, I really think liberty versus security matters. Uh, and when it comes to uh, this bill, this bill comes the closest to having the balance that we'd all like to see. It takes into consideration the importance of liberty, but it also takes into consideration what happens as we protect our security. I, I just close by saying, if uh, of all the attacks we've had, and as bad as they have been, none of them have been the sort of catastrophic uh, infrastructure attack uh, that we can see that impacts the grid, impacts our ability to communicate, impacts our ability uh, for the water system to work, impacts our ability for the electrical system to work. Uh, if that happens, the Congress will not only act, the Congress will overreact. This is the right time to have this debate Let's put this information on the books right now. Let's give us a law that makes sense at a time when we've got time to debate it instead of kind of the direction we'll turn uh, when we should have debated this and moved in this direction right now. I encourage my colleagues to vote for this bipartisan bill uh, that I think can uh, wind up on the president's desk and become law. And I would yield to my patient friend from Maine, who's been waiting, uh, and uh, he and I serve on the Intelligence Committee together, and uh, I look forward to his comments.